Gives us a little time to uh, cover a story that we uh, really are very fascinated in, as I know our audience is. The widow of late Kobe Bryant is in federal court for a lawsuit against the Los Angeles uh, sheriffs and fire departments. Vanessa Bryant is seeking comp compensation for photos that deputies shared of the remains of the NBA star, their daughter Gianna, as well as seven others on board the helicopter that crashed in January of 2020. Chris Chester, who lost his wife and daughter, uh, in the crash is a co-plaintiff. This trial began over a week ago. Long crime senior reporter Megan Conniff is uh, out in the California covering this trial, been doing a great job, uh, bringing us all the reports uh, each week about what uh, to expect and what we're seeing as far as this is concerned. And you can find that all on lawandcrime.com. So we want to welcome her to the show. Uh, so Megan, what's, uh, what's going on? What's the update? It does look like today is the day that Vanessa is going to take the stand. We had a, a morning of some fire officials testifying, and then we're going to be getting into uh, Christopher Chester, the co-plaintiff in this. He's going to be testifying, and he also has a, a friend, Paul Westhead Jr., who's the son of the legendary NBA coach. It's it's kind of remarkable that we have the uh, former head of the Lakers here who's actually not here for anything Kobe Bryant related. He's here for Chris Chester. Uh, the, apparently, they're, they, they go way back, but we're going to be getting into that testimony soon. And then they do expect uh, Vanessa to take the stand. And it's going to be some emotional testimony about how these photos, how the, the county's reaction to them, how they dealt with it, just how it's affected her over the years. I'm, I'm expecting it to be pretty emotional. And then the cross-examination of her will, of course, be interesting to watch. Yeah, Megan, tell, talk to us a little bit. Uh, we, we discussed it the other day about some of the uh, bizarreness of the testimony of the officers. One as to why they did this, whether they were required to do it, and then like actually walking at least one of the witnesses having to walk off the stand on a number of occasions. Can you explain that to us, like the temperature of what you're seeing there? Yes, there has been so much uh, kind of all over the place testimony. And, and, and what is really helping the plaintiffs and hurting the defense is that the uh, county did a big investigation into this. They hired a Shepherd, Shepherd Mullen law firm back in March 2020 who did interviews with a lot of these deputies. And the deputies were pretty candid in some of those interviews about what the photos showed and what they said about them, that kind of thing. So now on the stand, there's all these denials that the photos, you know, were focused on body parts. They said it was just a training exercise exercise to look at the fuselage of the helicopter. But the problem for that testimony is it's contradicted by so many previous interviews describing what the photos said. So Brian Jordan, who was the one who fled the stand a few times, he admits, and the deputy who walked, around, walked him around to the scene says that he wanted to see all the bodies and he photographed them up close. He was actually disciplined for it by the fire department. They uh, got a lot of his disciplinary letter in today that he'd taken, you know, insensitive photos photos that were disrespectful to the victims and the families. And then it's it's pretty much a proven fact that he sent those to Tony and Brenda, who's the fire captain who testified yesterday that he didn't think that there were any real inappropriate photos there and that it was just a, a business decision for him. So it's definitely being put before the jury. And I think we're going to be hearing in closing argument that this is a huge cover up and that mm. they knew all along that this was Kobe Bryant. And they're they're the ones who tipped off TMZ to it because they had calls from Kobe's assistant at 10:22, 10:41. There was somebody from the helicopter company actually going by the substation and the uh, command center. So before TMZ broke the news at 11:24, they were aware of who this involved, and TMZ cited unidentified law enforcement sources. And it's been presented in this trial that TMZ has a history of you know paying sheriffs, deputies, and firefighters for information. So. I think we're going to be hearing a lot about how all this stuff that we're hearing in court is basically just a cover up for what actually happened, which was the deputies wanted to go up and take pictures of Kobe Bryant and the other victims. You, I think the, the county would counter that. But I think what we're hearing in the evidence is, is supporting a lot of that. Yeah, Megan, I just want to nail this down because I find it very interesting. If I got what you're saying right, is that they were being candid during the initial investigation, but then they come into court and they're doing a quote of cover up. And we always know the cover up is worse than the crime. But in this particular situation, I would imagine what you're saying is that this just is not a good look in front of the jury. They would have been better off just sticking with the original statements they gave. Is that a fair assessment? 
Yes, yes. The, the the changing of stories, I think, is looking very bad for the jury and the kind of downplaying of the graphic nature of the photos. When you've got some of these same guys back in March 2020 saying, oh, yeah, there were chunks of human flesh and, and really being kind of graphic about what the photos showed. It's, it's hard to listen to that and then think that the people on the stand don't have a real motive to try to change their testimony and downplay that, you know?